welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're doing ratio. Now this is the overview video. I'm also going to do some cancelling and simplifying in this video. But I've done another video which shows you how to solve the kind of questions they're likely to ask you about ratios in practice. So watch this one first and then you can look at how to solve the questions. It's very important that you know how to do fractions before you look at ratios. In particular, you need to know how to simplify or cancel fractions. So go and watch the fractions simplifying and cancelling video first and then come back here if you're not sure how to do that. Now I'm going to use an example to illustrate fractions, not fractions, ratios, and my best example here really is rice. I'm not very good at cooking in general, my wife is a very good cook, me not so much, but I make very good rice. Now, well actually the best way to make rice is with a rice cooker. Um, and it was my wife who introduced me to rice cookers, she's from Malaysia and lots of people have rice cookers over there. But when I was a poor student back in the day, I hadn't even heard of rice cookers. They're not as common in England. And so I had to cook it in a saucepan on the hob the old fashioned way. And the most important thing when cooking rice on the hob, actually there's a couple of important things. Firstly, you need to use the right kind of rice. Now I swear by basmati rice. I don't think there's any rice that can compare with basmati and I always cook everything with basmati rice. But when you take your rice, the mistake people make is they just pour a bunch of rice into the pan, they fill it up with water under the tap, they boil it, then they drain it, and then they serve the rice. Now if you do that, you get stodgy rice. It's not good. What you should do is measure the amount of rice and measure the amount of water. And the ratio, the amount of rice to water, is very important. Now it depends on the kind of rice you use, and it depends on how big your saucepan is and things like this. But when I was a student, I cooked quite a lot of rice, and the ratio I found that worked for me was one part rice to one and a half parts water. So if you do one cup of rice, then you do one and a half cups of water in the saucepan. If you get that ratio right, then this is exactly the amount of water you need to cook this amount of rice, and you shouldn't have excess water that needs to be drained off at the end. Just incidentally to explain exactly how you should do this, because I think it's very important, you pour in the water cold, don't heat up the water first, bring it to the boil, stir it when it gets to the boil, then put the lid on, turn the gas down so it just simmers, and then you need to, well you can leave it for a few minutes, but you want to be watching it. After a while you'll find the water will all start to boil off. You mustn't let it boil completely dry because it'll burn on the bottom of the pan, but you'll see like little bubbles coming up through sort of columns of holes in the rice if you like. When the last few bubbles are coming up, turn off the gas and leave it to steam, just sit there for five minutes and then you get perfect rice. It's very important that you don't stir it lots of times. When you stir rice it breaks up the grains, that releases starch and it's the starch that makes it stodgy. So if you want nice light fluffy rice, that's the method I recommend. It's turned into a cooking program hasn't it? Let's get back to ratios. So if that's how much, generally you'd use one cup of rice per person. So if I wanted to make enough rice for two people, I need to use twice as much. So I would have two cups of rice, and if it's one and a half parts of water for one person, I'd double it. Two lots of one and a half will give me three cups of water for two people. So ratios are written like this. There's always a colon in the middle, the two dots on top of each other. And you generally have to say which thing is which. So in this case I'm saying this is my rice and this is my water. Um, but ratios are very similar to fractions, so you can kind of think of this, you'd read it as 2 to 3, but you can think of it a bit like a fraction, 2 thirds. They share a lot of things in common. If I wanted to make rice for 4 people, I would have to double all my quantities. So instead of 2 cups of rice, I would have 4 cups of rice. And instead of 3 cups of water, I'd have 6 cups of water. These two ratios are the same. They represent the same ratio or fraction or proportion. Um, it's just you can multiply the numbers up to make the numbers bigger, you can divide them down to make them small as well depending on how many people you're cooking for. But it's exactly the same with a fraction. So if I've got two thirds, I could write this as four sixths. Two thirds, four sixths, you can kind of think of it like that. Fractions are different to ratio, they're not the same but they are, they're very similar. So I can write the numbers bigger and you can cancel it down, you can simplify it to get back to the two thirds, it's completely up to you. But the point is that these two fractions are the same, these two ratios are the same. And just like with fractions, you want to cancel it down to the simplified 
version, the one with the smallest numbers on the top and bottom, is the same with ratios. For the simplified version, you want the smallest numbers on either side while still being whole numbers. So if you've got 4 to 6, you can simplify this down to 2 to 3 by dividing both sides by 2. You can't go any further because you don't want um, fractions or half numbers in a ratio. You do need to have whole numbers on both sides in the simplified form. So that's the general overview. I'll just do a couple of quick simplifying examples. But it's very simple really if you know how to simplify fractions. There's not much difference. So if we had a ratio like 4 to 10 and we had to simplify it, you're just looking for a number that divides into both of these to make the numbers as small as possible while still keeping them whole numbers. So these are both even, so we divide them both by 2. So half of 4 is 2, half of 10 is 5. And then ask yourself, does anything else go into 2 and 5? No. So that would be the simplified ratio. It's 2 to 5. Let's try another one. We'll do 18 to 24. So again, you're looking for numbers that divide into both of these. Well, they're both still even, so I'll halve them both. So half of 18 is 9, half of 24 is 12. Now, they're not both even now. Does anything go into 9 and 12? 3. 3 divides into the both, so I can divide both sides by 3. So 3's into 9 will go 3 times. 3's into 12 will go 4 times. Does anything else divide into 3 and 4? Nope. So that would be my simplified ratio. So sometimes they will give you ratios and they'll say express this ratio in its simplified form and that's all you do. You just keep dividing down until you can't divide the numbers down anymore, making sure you keep them as whole numbers on either side. So as I say, if you want to know how to solve particular problems or questions to do with ratios, go and watch that video. But as far as the basics are concerned, that's all you really need to know. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Thank you.